Remember, everything that you do, every choice that you make, either moves you closer or further away from your ultimate goals. And if you're watching this post, hopefully one of your ultimate goals is to achieve better health and wellness. Now, if you look at any list of superfoods, you will commonly find seaweeds or algae included on those lists. And I want to talk about the potential benefits of consuming seaweeds because they are a superfood, but also the important cautions to take when you consume seaweed in large quantities or on a daily basis. Technically speaking, there is a difference between algae and seaweed. Algae are unicellular, one cellular organisms. They're found in both fresh water and seawater. Seaweeds are multicellular organisms found only in seas and oceans. But for the purposes of this post, when I say seaweed, I, I'm referring to both seaweed and algae. So there are different varieties. Wakame is a green seaweed. Kombu is brown. Both nori and dulce are red seaweeds. Hijiki is brown. Irish moss. And then spirulina is a blue-green algae. Chlorella is a green algae. It's commonly used in soups, stews, stir fries, salads. A great easy salad is wakame seaweed, sesame oil, low sodium soy sauce, sesame seeds, and rice vinegar. Beautiful. Seaweed is also available dried or as a powder or flake. Just try sprinkling dried seaweed on vegetable sides, salads, and rice. Seaweeds as a group are high in potassium, fiber, calcium, iron, magnesium, iodine, and we're going to talk more about iodine in just a moment. Polyunsaturated fatty acids like omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin C, seaweeds act as a prebiotic to help feed those beneficial bacteria in the intestines, and some components only found in seaweed, including fucoxanthine, fucoidins, and fluorotannins. Let's talk about each brown, red, and green seaweed. Orally brown seaweeds are used for fibromyalgia, cancer, osteoarthritis, fatigue, insomnia, high lipid levels, cardiovascular disease, asthma, and radiation exposure. They're also used for Gulf War syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, post-traumatic stress disorder, multiple chemical sensitivities, and weight loss obesity, mostly due to the high fiber content making you feel full. And it's great to lessen blood sugar markers for type 2 diabetes. Brown seaweed pharmacologically contains active polyphenols called fluorotannins, such as ecol, ventol, and trifluoroethyl A, and steroid derivatives, including fucosterol and ergosterol also brown seaweed contains. Fluorotannin constituents of brown seaweed have antioxidant effects and inhibit lipid peroxidation. There is an interest in using brown seaweed for preventing certain types of cancer due to its antioxidant effects of the fluorotannin constituents. In vitro, echol constituents of brown seaweed protects against lung fibroblasts against oxidative stress. Crude polyphenol extracts of brown seaweed also seem to decrease proliferation of cancer cells in vitro. Fluorotannins from brown seaweed also appear to protect against gamma ray radiation exposure. Some research has shown that trifluoroethyl A from brown seaweed reduces oxidative cellular damage caused by radiation exposure. The echol constituents also seem to decrease mortality in animal models of lethal irradiation. There's also interest in brown seaweed for preventing osteoarthritis due to the antioxidant and potential anti-inflammatory effects of brown seaweed constituents. In addition to antioxidant effects, the fluorotannin-rich extracts of brown seaweed appear to reduce production of pro-inflammatory prostaglandins, including interleukin-1-alpha and cyclooxygenase-2. Fluorotannins in brown seaweed also inhibit something called the MMP, the matrix metalloproteinase enzyme. And these are thought to have important roles in preventing cancer metastasis, osteoarthritis, aging, and wrinkle formation. Brown seaweeds are being used to, to prevent asthmatic attacks. Brown seaweed are thought to have anti-inflammatory effects and anti-allergic effects that might reduce asthma exacerbation. 
in animal models administering brown seaweed extracts appears to decrease experimentally induced hyper airway sensitivity. And again, those MMP enzyme levels. And other inflammatory cytokines, the brown algae constituents appear also to have antibacterial and antiviral effects. In vitro, the fluoroglucinol derivatives contained in brown seaweed inhibits replication and cellular entry of human immunodeficiency virus, HIV-1. Now let's talk about green algae. Because chlorella has a hard cell wall that humans cannot digest, you must take it as a supplement to reap its benefits. It's often called a broken cell wall. So the protein content, chlorella is 50 to 60% protein. What's more, it's a complete protein source, meaning it contains all nine of the essential amino acids. Vitamin B12, some chlorella varieties have vitamin B12, but more studies are needed to see if it actually has enough vitamin B12 for those on vegan and, and vegetarian diets. It contains iron and vitamin C. Chlorella can be a good source of iron. Depending on the supplement, it may provide anywhere from six to 40% of your daily need of iron. It's also an excellent source of vitamin C, which helps you to absorb iron. Other antioxidants, these tiny green cells provide a wide range of antioxidants. Other vitamins and minerals, Chlorella provides small amounts of magnesium, zinc, copper, potassium, calcium, folic acid, and other B vitamins. Chlorella has gotten some buzz for its ability to help the body detox. In fact, animal studies indicate that it's effective at helping remove heavy metals and other harmful compounds from the body. Heavy metals include some elements that are essential and important in small amounts, such as iron and copper, but these and other heavy metals like cadmium, lead, mercury can be toxic in larger amounts. In animals, chlorella has been found to lessen the heavy metal toxicity of the liver, of the brain, and of the kidneys. Furthermore, chlorella has been shown to help lower the amount of other harmful chemicals that are sometimes found in food. One of these is dioxin, a hormone disruptor that can contaminate animals all up the food chain, including us. Chlorella is helpful for the immune system, high in antioxidants, blood pressure, blood sugar levels, eye health, because it contains the antioxidants lutein and zeaxanthine, and it's been shown to be helpful for PMS and fibromyalgia. Next, let's talk about spirulina. Spirulina was consumed by the ancient Aztecs, but became popular again when NASA proposed that it could be grown in space for use by astronauts. A standard daily dose of spirulina is one to three grams, but doses of up to 10 grams have been used effectively, quite effectively. This tiny algae is packed with nutrients. A single tablespoon, about seven grams, of dried spirulina contains four grams of protein, 11% of the RDA of vitamin B1, 15% of the RDA of vitamin B2, B3, 4% of the RDA. Copper, 21% of the daily RDA recommended intake. And for iron, it's 11%. It also contains decent amounts of magnesium, potassium, and manganese, and small amounts of almost every other nutrient that you need for a healthy body. In addition, the same amount holds only 20 calories and 1.7 grams of digestible carbs. Gram for gram, Spirulina may be the single most nutritious food on the planet. A tablespoon, about seven grams, of spirulina provides just a small amount of fat, about one gram, including both omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids in a perfect ratio, about 1.5 to one for human health. The quality of the protein in spirulina is considered excellent, comparable to eggs. It gives you all of the essential amino acids that you need, high in antioxidants, anti-inflammatory agents, it lowers LDL and lowers oxidized LDL, helpful for blood pressure, allergic rhinitis, blood sugar control, heavy metal detoxification, neuroprotection, immune health, arthritis, and exercise training. 
Now let's talk about red seaweeds. Red seaweeds have been shown to increase blood sugar blood circulation, regulate blood sugar levels, and lower LDL or bad cholesterol, as well as improve your immune system overall. Someone struggling with insulin resistant issues or someone trying to naturally combat cholesterol levels and anyone trying to improve their immune health would all be excellent candidates for red seaweeds. And it's helpful for skin health. One benefit of red seaweeds is its antioxidant effects which counters damage from free radicals to your cells. Red seaweed is also considered to have several antiviral compounds. The carrageenans, a type of sugar molecule found in red seaweeds, are believed to boost interferon production in the immune system and might be an effective preventative measure against diseases like HIV, shingles, and cold sores, helpful for joint health, eye health, brain health because it crosses the blood-brain barrier, exercise recovery. Vegetarians and vegans would also highly benefit from consuming red seaweed on an ongoing basis. Here are some cautions. I want you to be aware of iron content, copper content, because those levels can exceed your daily recommended intake. Also iodine and heavy metals. So when we talk about the large iodine, iodine content, we mean very large, insofar as that even the lowest source of iodine from seaweed, nori, at the lowest detectable estimate, about 12 micrograms per gram, is enough for you to reach your daily requirements when con consuming nine grams of the seaweed product daily. The largest source of brown seaweed kombu, highest estimates being about 2,600 micrograms per gram, consume at the same nine gram dose would result in you reaching the daily recommended iodine intake about 240 times over and exceeding the highest known tolerable upper limit by 800%. Now, while not acutely lethal, the actual toxicity being dependent upon underlying thyroid disorders such as high such high levels are known to acutely suppress thyroid function and can eventually cause goiter. Keep in mind that on average, the, the average Japanese diet contains around five grams of seaweed daily and the iodine content in the range of 1,000 to 3,000 micrograms daily. Now, boiling seaweed in water for 15, 30 minutes appears to be sufficient in reducing iodine content in the seaweed as it is leached into the water and iodine can then be released in the atmosphere due to it being a gas in the natural state. And this processing may eliminate up to 99% of iodine from kombu. Other seaweeds may not have such a high loss. Additionally, a study found that boiling water may remove heavy metals like arsenic, mercury, and cadmium. Due to such high losses of iodine from seaweed, usually processed or cooked seaweed does not carry as significant a risk of iodine toxicity, such high risk being seen to, to develop with raw kelp products. Now, goitrogens are compounds that are known to have anti-thyroid properties, and in some developing countries, goitrogens, usually from cassava, augment iodine deficiency by competing with what little iodine is consumed in the culture. The competition between goitrogens and iodine is bi-directional, so in instances of excess iodine, it is thought that goitrogens may actually help to prevent toxicity from occurring due to preventing their uptake a bit. Interestingly, many traditional Japanese dishes, such as soups, that contain seaweed also contain foods with known goitrogen content, such as sea bean, uh, soybeans broccoli, and bok choy. Now, heavy metals could also be a problem if you consume seaweeds on a daily basis or in large quantities, particularly arsenic, cadmium, mercury, and lead. So choose sources that do third-party testing to ensure that the levels are reasonable, if not untraceable. I recommend that you choose sources from Korean sources or from the United States main coast, which
do third party testing and look at these four toxic metals, arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury to make sure that it's safe for consumption. One website I'll, I'll give you, seaveg.com, that's S-E-A-V-E-G.com. They are harvesting seaweed from the main coast and they do an excellent job of main, maintaining and ensuring that the seaweed is low in these toxic metals. Now, one more word of caution. If you have existing GI issues, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, your symptoms may worsen because of the, fib the type of fiber content that is found in seaweed. So if you have existing GI problems, a word of caution to you. You might want to check with your doctor to make sure that consuming seaweeds on an ongoing daily basis is safe for you. I'm thrilled and honored that you all are watching from around the world. If you have your favorite recipe of seaweed that is delicious and safe for consumption, please share it with the channel so that we can all learn together. Make sure that you like this page, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and loved ones because we post each and every week on topics to help you achieve and maintain optimal health and wellness. I'm with Zenith Labs. We have a website, zenithlabs.com, an Instagram page, a Facebook page. I encourage you to check all of those out and continue your journey in health and wellness. Again, thanks so much for your time and attention. Dr. Ryan Shelton.